Hey, welcome to this video. I feel like it's time to talk about passion. So there is a common misconception about this word because when people ask you about what are you passionate in this moment, you might say, oh, I'm passionate about eating chocolate or watching this movie, which I don't think that's a passion. It's definitely an emotion that you feel to do this thing, but this is something that you consume, right? Although this is the definition of passion, strong and barely controllable emotion, I believe there is a distinction. So here is my take on it. I'm gonna call it consumer passion and creator passion. So consumer passion is the thing that you feel like consuming in the moment. You feel a strong urge to eat that chocolate and that is perfectly fine. But I wanna talk about creator passion which is something that you really want to create in this moment, something that you feel so inspired and passionate about that you want to bring into this world. And I feel like that's why people tell you not to follow your passion because they associate it with the thing that you want to consume. And that's true, like you can't expect to get somewhere if you always consume things, but if you create from your passion, you are going to get somewhere. I promise you that. So creator passion is something that really resonates with you, that you feel like doing, it's almost like it's pulling you in. And this could be many things like painting, filming a video, hiking, going on a mountain trip, gardening, solving equations, playing volleyball, playing the guitar, you know, whatever it is, it is something that you most feel excited about. It could also be serving people and creating communities or becoming a doctor and healing people or a teacher, you know, whatever it is, it's something inside of you. And this is your gift to the world. Now, how do you discover or how do you find your passion? And I believe it is not something that you find because essentially it's a part of you already. Some of the greatest musicians or dancers, they can just get lost in the dance and perform this magical, beautiful spectacle. And when you ask them how did they do it, they can't really explain it. They're just lost in the moment. It's so feeling based, it's so intuitive, right? As Michael Jordan says, being in the zone, or as other people call it, the flow state. So if you don't know what your passion is, it might be because you're too distracted or it might be because you don't believe you have a passion. But I want to encourage you to ask yourself and maybe even journal about it. What is that thing that truly inspires you, that truly motivates you to create something great? It is actually that simple. You just have to ask with curiosity and you have to want to know it. Just like you know, the sky is blue. And it could be as simple as going for a walk or going out with your friends. And then all of a sudden you see something, you get inspired, you feel drawn to that thing. And it may be that you see a football court and you feel drawn to play football with your friends. And that's literally it. You feel excited to do that, so you should do it. And that's going to lead you to the next thing. But remember, this is just an example. It's going to be unique to you. So trust your feelings and do that. And it's usually something that we loved doing as kids. For me, it was drawing. I loved drawing as a kid, but I never really pursued it up until I graduated high school. I always felt it like it's a part of me, not something separate I have to look for. And I can promise you that you have that too. Everybody has that. There are no people that are born without a passion. Now, why is your creator passion your gift to the world? So first of all, we only do the work that we love doing. If we pressure ourselves to do something that we don't like, it will only last for some time and we wouldn't feel fulfilled. The idea that work is supposed to be hard is an old statement. It's not true. And I feel like more and more people, including me, are starting to realize that. When you actually work from love, you're going to work more better and with greater results. And that's very easy to prove. How much do you actually love eating pizza or chocolate? Even though you know it's not the healthiest choice of food, you just love it. Well, imagine if you could love your work a fraction of how much you loved chocolate. How much harder would you actually work then? So when you actually work towards that which excites you, you learn to love the actual process and the results that come out of it are the greatest thing you could contribute to humanity. 
there is a place for all of us to follow our passion and make a living out of it. This doesn't mean it won't be challenging, but it's definitely something that I want to pursue because my other option is working something that I don't like. Now here is my personal example. I love to paint, but it wasn't always like that. It took time and effort to learn to paint and to learn to enjoy the process, which is more important in my opinion. So what is my gift to humanity? I believe my gift is my paintings. I hope to inspire and convey beauty and emotion in my work and give my unique vision to the world. I would love for people to buy my paintings and put them on their wall to decorate and inspire them daily. I would love to teach people how to paint, how I think about painting, how I get inspired, my working process. I would love to go on a trip with fellow artists to some beautiful place in nature and just put our canvases and paints out there and paint this beautiful majestic scenery and just have great time. Perhaps one day I would love to create my own art book or even hold an exhibition of my paintings. And because I feel so excited and passionate about art and I feel like this just keeps increasing, I would naturally be like that with everybody and everywhere I go. Passion brings more passion. Just think about Bob Ross. How was he so calm and relaxed and so joyful and just grabbing your attention and inspiring you to pick up a brush and start painting like him? Well, imagine all of us got to that level. So now I would like to expand in the bigger picture of the world. And how can we build a new world based on all of us giving our gifts to each other. So let's say you've been following your passion for a while. You get good at it and you want to start teaching that to others. So you start making YouTube videos. You put yourself out there and start helping people. Then let's say there is a person who discovers his passion is painting as well. And he sees your video and he wants to learn more from you. Now what happens is that this person, um, let's call him John, John wants to learn how to paint, so he starts watching your YouTube videos and starts implementing the advice. Well, before John would be doing something else, but now that you put yourself out there, he's able to start learning from you and he dedicates a certain amount of time and effort to learn painting. And he feels very inspired to continue learning painting so you might even develop a relationship where he starts paying you and you give him more advice and guidance. And this is serving each other, right? Now you'll be able to start making money from your passion. So you'll feel even more inspired and dedicate even more time to it. And John will be learning from you. And this is literally how the whole world functions. Everyone is giving to everyone in service to others. So why not serve your best? Then later on, the cycle will continue and you will reach more people and perhaps John will become a teacher himself or start doing commission work or go to animation. So this is how we build the new world where everyone serves and cares about each other. And your best service is done by following that which excites you. Because right now, not everyone cares about each other. For example, McDonald's serves food which is not beneficial to anybody in any way. But we still pay them and eat their food. And I don't want to judge anybody here. I went through the same thing. I just want to give an example how can we build a new world where everybody serves each other, cares about each other and we're all happy because I believe it is possible if all of us start following our passion. Which brings me to the final point of this video, which is how to follow your passion. And the advice of many people is to discipline yourself, make a schedule to follow and organize. And you're free to try and do that. I did that and it worked for me, but I believe there is a better way, which I am now implementing myself. And it is simply get out of your head and drop down in your heart. As contradictory and scary as that may sound. So let me explain. If we go back to where your passion was born, it was born when you were a kid. What does a kid do? It does what it feels like doing, right? A kid certainly wouldn't think about what to do. Children always do that which excites them the most. Careless, free, joyful, happy to explore the world, right? 
And then all of a sudden, let's say when you're five years old, you pick up a pencil and start drawing without thinking. It's just pure expression. And we may call that motivation. You feel motivated to draw, so you just draw. What happens when we grow up? We make up schedules and plans and put pressure on ourselves, do this and do that, work hard, and we just get lost in our head and start overthinking everything because there is so much to do. So we may feel motivated, start drawing, but then this motivation fades away and there is burnout, there is art block and all of that stuff. But why does that happen? Well, imagine yourself at five years old. You feel super inspired to draw your mom and dad, make a postcard and give it to them. And now imagine talking to yourself like this. Hey you, yes you, what do you think you're doing? There is no time to draw your mom and dad. You don't even know how perspective works. Pick up that pencil and start learning immediately. Well, do you think the kid is going to want to learn perspective because his drawing skills are bad? Of course not. It will immediately go to his parents and start crying that you talk to him like that. Well, why are you talking to yourself like that then? We like to think that we are in control of these things. We believe that motivation couldn't be relied on because it's here one moment and gone the next. But it is gone for the very reason that you talk to yourself negatively. We think that the mind comes first. We have to plan and prepare and do certain things because we surely know what's best for us, don't we? Well, do we actually? But I'm here to make the wild statement that intuition and your feeling comes first. You always know what to do right here, but not up in here. So there is always something that you feel drawn to do in every moment. For example, I felt drawn to start learning Disney style faces. So I started doing that instead of pressuring myself when my mind was telling me, oh, come on, I need to do a painting. I need to upload it on Instagram. I need to find a reference, blah, blah, blah. But at that moment, I didn't feel like painting. I felt like doing these sketches. And I finally started listening to that and started drawing what I feel like drawing. And that was the best decision that I made so far. Because later on, the thing that you do will lead you to want to learn how to do it better and learn more about it. So it's always fueled by your excitement. And this is just briefly mentioning this concept, which I think I'm going to make another video about explaining my whole process. But essentially, this is what I always do now. I first ask myself, what do I feel like drawing? And it might be doing a full painting or it might be just gestures or maybe a quick study of a figure or environment. Whatever it is, I first listen to my intuition. And honestly, I never felt happier with my art, both with the process and the final result. So I'm a huge advocate for everybody to try that. And with that, I want to inspire you to take action towards the thing that you feel most excited about. Wherever you are in your journey, you are perfectly meant to be there. I know it may be scary. I know it seems like you're not going to make it or you don't even want to try. But believe me that I used to believe the same thing. And now here I am doing what I love. I believe we're literally given everything that we need to succeed in our passion and it's really worth it to pursue that. So keep it up, you got this.